All right, Shalom. So before I get going, I'd like to say all honor, glory, and praise be to the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahakwadash Raka. All right. Double honors to the elders over at the Great Millstone, Ruel. Shalom to you. Also, Shalom to the rest of the elders of the Israelite nation, you know, who are teaching this truth in sincerity, you know, and according to the true doctrine of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Um, also, Shalom to the um, hopeful elect of Israel, the hopeful elect men, you know, the men teaching this truth out in the four corners of the earth where we have been scattered. Um, also, Shalom to the rest of the one third of Israel, the rest of the one third being the men, women, and children of the Israelite nation who have forsaken this world and have come back to their true heritage, you know, are working and walking diligently therein, you know, and also are written to be delivered out of the destruction that is um, written to happen here um, on this earth. But specifically, um, specifically and mainly here in America, all right? Before I get going, this message is specifically to you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, and so-called Native American Indian people scattered abroad. You are all, in fact, the Israelites, you know, of this book, of the Bible, all right? And this Bible is consistent um, of your true heritage, you know, your history, and ultimately instruction. Instruction for you Israelites you know, to actually obtain life, true life, um, actual reality, you know, what true life is. You know, those of you in the world, if you're still in the world at this point, those of you who are chasing riches, this Bible is your instruction book to actually obtain riches, you know, um, up to attain happiness. Anything you may be looking for, it is spoken of throughout the book, all right? So, um, we can go on into the lesson. And ultimately, the lesson is just um, going into obtaining, obtaining things. You know, what you may esteem may not be um, what's truly desired, you know. And it's ultimately because this world, it tries to um, bribe you or trick you into actually wanting to, I guess, participate in this world. And it's very easy to do so. You know, this world offers you all types of junk, all types of madness, and it's ultimately to distract you, Israelites specifically, from, you know, your true heritage, who you truly are, what you truly should be doing. And that should be obtaining the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that comes within this book, and you ultimately going on to apply all, you know, that was just stated so you can be in line with the scriptures and in line with all that comes with the scriptures. Because within this book, you know, it's a history book. It'll tell you your history. But throughout the understanding, you understand that your history and your future has a specific um, direction it can go. You know, and if you're aligning with this book, you know, that that future could lead you into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is unfathomable. You know, for you Israelites, you will be the heads in that in that um in that kingdom that is to come. You're not gonna be underfoot. You're not gonna be niggers. You're not gonna be dying on um, the news daily. You know, you're not gonna be oppressed for hundreds of years. Um, So-called white man is not gonna come and take your land and teach you another language and tell you that you're somebody that you're not. All of these things are gonna be eradicated and you're gonna be the head of that kingdom. Those of you, those of you, the Israelite nation um, who repent and come back um, and follow this doctrine and truth and sincerity, all right? And the other half of that would be um, the judgments that are to come because everybody's going to be judged and you're going to be judged according to your works, according to how you proceeded um, with taking in, you know, who you actually are, how you proceeded with being an Israelite. And the judgments could be death or it could also be eternal life, you know, and all these things come with these scriptures. But... Again, you have to repent. You have to come back to who you um, should be and come back to your true understanding, to your true knowledge, to your true history so you can actually obtain what is actually written here. You see? So real quick, we're going to start um, with the first scripture. I believe it's Matthew chapter 16. Like you. Yeah. 
Yep, we we'll start here at verse 25. Matthew chapter 16, verse 25 reads, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You know, we'll slow it down there. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. All right? So these are red letters here. So we understand that this is Yahweh speaking. Yahweh being who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right? And he's saying, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And um, very important to understand is Yahweh came back for those of his nation. It's a lock. Yeah, I just have to find what I'm looking for. Verse 24, 15 and 24, and this is just to give context to what we were just reading in Matthew 16. Matthew 15 and 24, it says, But he answered and said, He being Yahweh, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Yahweh was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Yahweh ultimately, he's only speaking to Israel when he says this in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. It says, for whosoever, those of you of the Israelite nation, who Yahweh Shai was sent to, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So ultimately, if you want to save your life, if you truly want to save your life and you want to live, you have to lose your life. Lose your life here in this world. You know, this world that doesn't agree with um, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. You see, so that's why you have to lose your life. When you um, hear you're an Israelite, you know, it should hit you like a train. You know, it should be a complete turning around of your actions, what you're pursuing, what you're doing. Because for the first time in your life, you have to receive the true understanding of who you are and your heritage and your true history and how far back that goes and how far forward it could go as well. And that's why Yahweh Shai is saying, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it because you have to turn from your current ways. You know, you might be in the world and you're chasing checks money you know women cars all of these things you have to lose that you know you have to let that go because it's not in alignment with what Yahweh Shai um with Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is expecting for you to actually get life those for you who actually truly want to live you know because it's an elect thing it's only going to be a select um people who are actually going to want to truly obtain life you know, and the rest, you know, they're ultimately going to be blinded. So they're not going to be able to receive this. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So you have to lose your life. Come back to your true heritage. Understand you're an Israelite. And then walk within those ways, the true ways. And it says, and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So if you lose your life for the sake of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, he said, you're going to find your life. So to find your life, you actually have to lose your life. Okay, so if I got a car and it's um, full of people, I can't go pick somebody, more people up. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately, just saying I'm full already. I don't have space for something new. So I have to drop all those people off and I have to start fresh. I have to clear house so I can add in new things. That's why you're losing your life for Yahweh's sake. And you're going to find it because she's going to refill you, you know, that car that was full of people, he's going to fill you up with people who are according and in line with these scriptures. They're on the right page. They're on the right track. They're going to be able to help you actually obtain that life. It says, verse 26, it says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? Right? If you, what's, What are you going to profit if you gain the whole world? Say you got everything in the world. You know, you're in the world and you actually obtain. You know, you got the cars. You got the houses. You got um, the fame, the glory, all these things to the point where you're, you're in need of nothing. You don't need anything to be saved. You can't be saved because you already in your mind believe that you have everything. It says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You see? Because throughout all of these things, it's okay to have these things too. I'm not going to, let me clarify that. It's okay if you um in the world obtained and you, you know, got the match and you got the, the Ferraris and then you got you heard the truth and you actually turned back and repented, which it also in the scripture says it's hard to do, you know, because you're gonna be 
immersed in all of that to the point where you're not going to, when you hear this, it's not going to actually change. But most people in the Israelite nation are underfoot. They're poor. They're impoverished. They're in bad situations. So when you hear this, it should be a light, you know, but if you have so much, it's really hard for you to even perceive this. You know, what need do you have? You know, but it can happen. So, so not to um say that's not exactly possible. It just is really hard. I believe Yahweh Shai said it's easier for a camel to go through a needle, the eye of a needle, than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because you're going to be trying to come with all that baggage and all your riches. You can't bring your mansion into the kingdom. Because everything here on the earth, you know, is going to be destroyed. You know, so if you're holding on to all that baggage, you're not actually going to have the chance to actually see the kingdom. It says, for what is it a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Because that's ultimately what's going to happen. When you're making deals with the world, with the earth, you're going to gain everything here. And you're going to get further and further away from the truth. You're going to get further and further away from your heritage. And you're not going to want it. You know, you're not going to follow through and, um, you know, become a servant to the Lord. Because you're serving yourself. You have everything. You have the means to do everything. So you feel like you don't need these things. But you're going to die one day. You're going to lose your soul. When the Lord comes back and hands out that judgment, he's going to X you out. You're going to have to come back as a baby in the kingdom of heaven. You know, but there's going to be men that's going to actually survive and going to see through all of this. Their body's going to be changed and they're going to be put and set up as rulers of in the kingdom of heaven. All men of the Israelite nation. You know, we're going to have women and we're going to have all the mansions. We're going to have land. We're going to have all the riches. The Lord said he's going to give you all your heart's desires. Paraphrasing. You see? And that's why Yahweh Shai is saying, for well, what is a man profited? Your profit is your gain. What are you going to actually gain if he shall gain the whole world in this world? You're going to gain this whole world, which is going to be destroyed. You know, see, there's no profit there. And lose his own soul. So you can gain all this stuff in this world here, but at the end of the day, you're gonna, your soul is going to be destroyed. You're going to die. And it says, well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You might be the richest man in the world. You might obtain all types of money, millions, billions, if you will. You see? But you don't have a big enough bank to pay the Lord for your soul. Because he, he is everything. He owns everything. He made everything. What can you obtain here on this earth? In the current time it is, that could be even brought to the Lord's face to make an exchange. Nothing. There's no amount of riches here. There's nothing here on this earth that the Lord doesn't already have. Because it all is his. The world is in his hand. He said the world is his footstool. You know, you, you don't have anything truly. You know, because this world, you know, is empty. Ultimately, it's empty. So you can gain everything here. But if you don't come back to the Lord and actually follow his law, statutes, and commandments and do as he wills, it's all for naught. And you don't have a bank big enough to pay the Lord. To make any kind of exchange with the Lord. You see? Yeah, verse 27, it says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So you're going to be judged. You're going to be rewarded according to your works. So your works here should be you serving the Lord. You know, growing in the Spirit, building up the Spirit, building up others in your nation, teaching this not teaching what the world presumes to be real, not teaching what the world, you know, expects and all these other, you know, very, very minor things, you know, all these things that are going to be um, destroyed, burnt up, written away. But none of this is going to exist. Everything here on the earth is going to be destroyed. It's going to be laid out flat, you know, and the kingdom of heaven is going to come descended and it's going to replace all of this. And the men, you know, that survived, this world, those men who um, lost their life, you know, for Yahweh Shai's sakes and follow the true doctrine of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, they're going to be exalted and they're going to be put on high. And these men are in low estate right now. Low estate as it looks. We're really in high estate because we know the truth and we know what's to come. But in the eye of the world, we're in a very low estate. You know, we live in the worst places. We, we're not glorified. But the Lord is saying if we... Um, follow him and we going to lose our life and follow him it says we're going to find our life 
that means we're going to actually truly see real life. We're going to see the kingdom of heaven, Lord willing. You see, Lord willing that that's um that I'm a man of that, you know. But that's what we work for. That's why we do these lessons. You know, that's why we're teaching. That's why we hit the highways. We're on the corners. Those men you see out there working, that's what they're working for. They're stacking up their riches in heaven, not here on earth, where it could be um, stolen or corroded away, you know, where nuclear fire is going to destroy it. Nuclear fire is going to destroy those um, million-dollar mansions, those Ferraris, those, her those helicopters and airplanes. All that stuff is going to be gone. So you can obtain the whole world, but it's going to be destroyed. And you're going to be broke in that day that the Lord comes back with his angels, you know, and he's giving out his rewards, you know, and your reward for not following is going to be death, man. And your word for following and being sincere and being diligent, you know, is going to be everlasting life, man. It's going to be ever everlasting life, um, kingdoms, a new body, you know, and it's beyond my imagination to truly give that to you. But I can speak on what the script, what the scriptures have revealed. You see? So, this is just a thing to consider. I'm going to read verse 26 one more time, and I'm going to close it out. Matthew 16 and 26, it says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You see? So, I'm going to just say, take that for food of thought. Consider it. Um, with that said, I'm going to say, Lord willing, this was edifying. Close out. I'm going to say Shalom.